Welcome back, everyone. How you doing? Hi. Doing all right? Hola. Hola, Paco. So we're going to be finishing up from yesterday. If you still need to cut out the items from that page, make sure you have some scissors. You definitely need glue, even if you have already cut them out. I need to get mine out of my handy dandy pocket. There should be four items. This one, this one, and then two graphs. We're going to be using all four of those items today. All right, where we left off yesterday, yesterday we did all of this stuff, segment addition postulate. Distance in one dimension, distance on a line. And we started talking about Oh, we had this one. This is what I was looking for. Shh, 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 shh. There was this example in your notes that was not finished for you during class. And you were asked to complete it on your own time. Okay? If you haven't completed it because you're having trouble, I urge you to go back to the section in your notes. If you've gone back to your notes and that's still not helping, today after lecture, I'll be wandering around. I'll be happy to help you. This example needs to be done in your notes for tomorrow. I will be doing a notebook check first thing tomorrow, and I want to see this example completed in your notes for tomorrow. All right, let's finish the example that we left, on, left off on yesterday. Yesterday, the last thing that we were talking about was distance in two dimensions on a plane. Okay? And I want to add this right triangle thing. Looks familiar, yes? Do you remember any kind of theorem <laughs> or formula that dealt with right triangles? The Pythagorean theorem, yeah. So what I want you to do is I want you to draw a pair of eyeballs looking toward the back of your notebook. Okay? It's like looking forward. And then I want you to write Pythagorean theorem. Because in a few months we're going to study right triangles very extensively and we'll go over the Pythagorean theorem again. And we will recall back to this page when we talked about distance. All right? All right. Let's look at our example. We have points R and Z. Those are the points that were given to us yesterday. And we were asked to find the distance between R and Z. We're on a plane, correct? Mm -hmm. Which means our formula is going to be the formula, the distance formula from above, which is the square root of x2 minus x1, that quantity squared, plus y2 minus y1, that quantity squared, all of that under the square root. I'm going to urge you right now, especially as you're learning these formulas, that you write down the formula to start with. Now let's do our substitutions. Which point is point x1, y1? Hint, it doesn't matter. Just pick one. Z. Z. He wants Z to be X1, Y1. You were free to make that choice, but now that we have made that decision, that forces us to have R be X2, Y2. We're free to make our choice, but once we make our choice, we're locked in. Do your substitutions now. <coughs> X2, X1, y2, y1, okay. I'm going to go ahead and focus in on the distance formula and my algebraic work here so that it's easier to see. Okay, I rewrote the formula and I substituted in for my graph. Now I'm going to go through and do the arithmetic, the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division that I'm able to. Order of operations demand I do the stuff in parentheses first. And so this first parentheses is 
negative 3 minus 7. What's negative 3 minus 7? Negative 10. Negative 10. All right. Here, negative 5 minus negative 1. I'm going to go ahead and change out this double negative and turn it into a positive because double negatives are bothering me. So I'm not going to think about too hard about what those numbers are. I'm just going to change those signs. All right. Negative 10 squared is the same thing as negative 10 times negative 10, yes? So that's 100. 5 plus 1 is? Six, I heard it. It was very soft, but I heard it. There you go. Six squared is? 36. I heard that also very softly. Thank you. And 100 plus 36 is? Awesome. Look familiar? Recall. We did this exact kind of problem way back in lesson C0L9. Put your recall symbol on the right hand side of the paper and all the way on the left hand side of the paper. For me that lesson happened on page 9 in my notebook. You find out what page number that lesson happened for you on and put the page number there for yourself you need to finish this example. It's not done. Simplify the radical to get your final answer and have that completed in your notes for tomorrow's notebook check. If you get stuck, first thing you should do is go back to these notes. If you're looking back at those notes and you're still having trouble, ask friends near you and if they're not able to explain, you have two, expert, two other experts in the room, Mr. McNutt and myself, that you can ask for direction. Questions on this? All right, have that for your notebook check for tomorrow. We're going to go ahead and go on to the next new item. I see a few people still writing, so I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds. Oh, that part. Okay. All right, I'm out of room on that page, so I need to start a brand new page. So if you're out of room, you're going to need you're going to need a lot of space. You're going to need at least half a page. So if you don't have half a page, start a new page for me. This topic is midpoint. Do you know what the word midpoint is? Means no. Yeah, in the middle. Just take some time. Little point. You're in the middle of the line. <laughs> he remembers my song. Apparently, there's video of me in class, and I'm singing that song. I'm not bothered by this. All right, so glue in the very large leftover definition, definition slash formulas right here. It's very large and in charge. Let's read it has the quick definition, formal definition, and then we'll talk about what this means. The midpoint of a line segment divides that line segment into two congruent segments. What did congruent mean? Same size, same shape. Nicely done. Here's the drawing. If we're drawing congruent segments, this is how you're going to draw that these two segments right here are congruent to each other. I'm going to draw a tiny little line through the segments that are congruent to each other. All the segments in a picture that all have the same number of lines, they're all congruent to each other. Okay? 
You're like, yes, I remember this. This idea that the midpoint is right in the middle and it divides it into congruent segments has these implications. The first one is that one segment is congruent to the other. Looking at this figure, our model figure, this says that line segment AM is congruent to line segment MB. Which implies that their measures are equal. The distance between A and M is equal to the distance between M and B. So far, no, no big deal, right? Okay. Well, let's look at this next one, three and four. This is saying that using those ideas of distances, the distance between A and M, which is one of the half segments, is half of the whole segment, the distance between A and B. Right? Seems pretty simple. This one's going to say the same thing, but now you're looking at the other piece. The bottom ones are telling you that the entire line segment is equal to two times one of the little half pieces. Make sense so far? All right. I'm going to pull some examples from the book so that we can practice. And I'm pulling them from the book because the last um, two classes that I've done, um, where I've pulled examples from my brain, they, they kind of didn't go so well at all. Here we go. At all. I kept getting the wrong, I, well, not wrong, I just kept getting different answers for my variable and it was weird. All right. I'm going to use my handy dandy straight edge and I'm going to use it to draw myself a segment. You don't have to use a straight edge to draw this segment. You can just YOLO. I have three points. I need names. Go. Thank you. N. I need a different voice. Q. Give me, huh? Q. Q. Another name, another voice. O. All right. We will definitely have some more points to name soon, so if you didn't get yours in, we will very soon. <clears throat> All right, so find N, Q are the directions, and what you're going to be given, what you're going to be told up front is that Q is the midpoint of line segment N, O. And you have to be given some information. And the information is that the entire line segment and O measures 30. How would I find the length of NQ? Well, I know that Q is the midpoint, so I know these are congruent. One more time? Split yeah, we're going to split it in half because each one of these is half of the whole thing. Half of 30 is 15. Here's how you show it algebraically. Again, we're going to make this very simple example more complicated, so when we do the next complicated one, it's easy. You can use either one of these two. I'd like to show you both methods. Okay? So I'm going to split this down the middle, and I'm going to show you method one. And we'll do method two. Both are legitimate. You don't have to do them both on a test. You pick the one that you like the best. This says, yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? It's from Mr. Lanzales. It's from Mr. Okay, I was like, I'm, I'm not Mr. <laughs> I was confused. Thank you. Oh, okay. So they hand they mix our assignments. Alrighty. NQ, which is half of the line segment, is equal to one half the whole segment's measure. Okay? That's using this one right up here. We're gonna substitute in for what I know, which is an O's measure of 30 and then 1 half times 30 is 
15. So far so good? Okay. Can you read it? It's not too small right now? It's okay? All right. Let's look at method two, and we're going to use this method right here, which says that the entire line segment is equal to two of one of the other smaller pieces that it's made of. So the whole line segment NO is equal to two times the one I'm interested in, NQ. Substituting in for what I know. It's very clear for me to see that multiplication now. How do I undo multiplication? Division. What do I divide by? By 2 because I want to get rid of this 2 right here in front of the NQ. When I do that, I'm going to get that 15 is the measure of NQ. Symmetry property says that it doesn't matter which way I write my equation, they're both the same thing. Make sense? Let's make it more complicated. I'm out of room. If I write really small, I can fit it. You want me to try to fit it? Okay, I've only got three lines left on my paper for this next example. All right. Again, using my super fancy high-tech, high very expensive straight edge popsicle stick. You don't have to use one, but feel free to do so if you'd like. Let's do this example. Give me three letters, three names from R. three voices I haven't heard. R. I heard R, another one please. E. I heard A, another M. one please. M. M. Ram, trucks. All right, this distance from here to here is going to be given by that expression. And the distance <coughs> here is going to be given by this. Okay, and now let me zoom in a little bit more so it's easier to see. All right, so far so good? All right. And we're asked, find x. There it is. Find the value of x. What could we do? Well, there's a number of things that we can do. I know that these two are congruent, yes? Well, I suppose I have to be told A is the midpoint, yeah? Now I can say they're congruent. Remember method um, two from above? Mm -hmm where we had the whole line segment is equal to two times one of those half pieces, we can use that here. RM, the whole line segment, is equal to two times one of the half pieces. And I'm selecting the half piece that I know something about. Now I can substitute. What is the distance of RM? Fourteen x plus two. I don't know the number that it is, but I know that whatever that number is, it can be expressed as fourteen x plus two. That is equal to two times whatever a m is. What is a m? Six minus three x. Six minus three x. Notice those parentheses again, because that'll help me make sure that I keep things in the right order. Solve for x. Look familiar? This was from our lesson four or five again. Let me go ahead and do this with you so that you have another example in your notebook. 
All right. What do you want to do first? Uh, the two times six, two times The two times six, the two times negative three X, yes. That is called distribution. So if you were asked to justify, what did you just do on this step? Distribution. Distribution. All right, now what? Minus 12. I can subtract 12 from both sides to remove it from here to put it to here. Or you can add 6x. Or I can add 6x to both sides to remove this negative x from the right and have it over here on the left. We're collecting our x's. And I recommend that you try to collect the variables first before you do anything else. Okay, just so that you can see what you've got. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that plus 6 first. Not that subtracting 12 was a bad move. It was totally the right thing to do. I just personally prefer to collect my variables before I do anything else. Now what? Minus Subtract two. the 12? Minus 2. I changed your mind, didn't you? Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that I like to do that first. Subtract two from both sides. I'm out of room here, so I'm gonna go ahead and write my response on the next column. I'm gonna scoot it over. We're gonna lose the graphic, but not all the work. So this is 12 at 20x. This is zero, so I don't have to write it. Equals 12 minus two. Now what? Divide, divide, by divide by 20. I want to divide because 20 is being multiplied, and I'm dividing by 20 because 20 is what I want to get rid of. Once I do this division, I'm going to have x equals 10 over 20 or 1 half. I I'd prefer this reduced version, please. Make sense? All right. That's about as complicated as this one gets. So let's go ahead and move. I'm out of room on this page. We're going to move on to the next page and do the same thing dealing with midpoints. But now we're going to do it on a Cartesian plane. <coughs> All right, so set up your paper for notes. We're doing good on time. Find this definition for midpoint, excuse me, this formula for midpoint, and glue it in, move it off, oh, I can't talk today. Move it to the far left of your notebook so that you have it like that as a title. Immediately follow it with this graph. This will be our example. All right, let's look at what this formula for midpoint is telling us. This formula for midpoint is telling us, hey, if I've got coordinates of two points, x1, y1, x2, y2, if I add the x coordinates together and divide by two, I'm going to get my new x coordinate. If I do the same thing to my y's, I'm going to get my new y coordinate. Please know that the answers for these aren't going to be a single number, they're going to be a location, a place on this coordinate grid that tells you where to go. I need the names for two points from voices that I've not heard from yet today. Go. Oh. <laughs> Voice changes are not allowed. <coughs> Give me a point. I haven't heard from you yet. F, okay. And then I haven't heard from the back row back here. Can I get a point from one of you two gentlemen? V. All right, so we have V and F. This formula, now I know what you're hating at. That's why I'm ignoring it. This formula requires you to have an X1, Y1. So which is X1, Y1? 
Good. Yeah, I don't know. It, does, it doesn't matter. Pick one. He said F. All right. F will be our X1, Y1, which means that V must be X2, Y2. Not because it has to be, but because we picked F to be X1, Y1. It wouldn't be the other way around if we picked V instead. Okay? Make sense? Let's go ahead and write out our formula to find the midpoint. The directions that you will find is going to say find the midpoint of line segment FV. All right. I'm going to start off with the formula. My midpoint formula says x1 plus x2, all of that over 2 gives me the x coordinate, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. All right, I have my formula. I'm going to go ahead and start my substitutions. x1 is negative 3. x2 is 7. y1 is 5. y2 is negative 1. I'm done with my substitutions. Questions on where I got those numbers? Okay, I'm going to zoom in on just my work so it's a little easier to see. Okay, I'm going to do the arithmetic that I'm allowed to do. Negative 3 plus 7, excuse me, I used the wrong formula. Negative 3 plus 7 is? 4. And 5 plus negative 1 is also 4. Questions on that? All right. Going to go ahead and simplify down now. 4 divided by 2 is? And again, 4 divided by 2 is 2, which means the address for my midpoint is 2, comma 2. Go back over to your graph and graph the point 2 over 2. Can I, ha can I name that point, please? Someone who I haven't heard from, name the point. T. T. There it is. Questions on finding this midpoint? Wave them in. OK. Questions on finding the midpoint? Here is your task for today. Your task for today to practice is going to be, first off, glue in this graph right here. We're in the middle of lecture. Thank you. Your task for today, glue in this graphic so that you have it. I need you to find the following information. You will find the midpoints of the following line segments. A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, E. After finding those midpoints, you will find the distances of the following segments. <coughs> A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E. I want to see at least one item from each done for tomorrow's notebook check somewhere in your notes. Okay? So you have four big items for me that I want to see attempted. I'm not asking that they be correct. I want to see them attempted for tomorrow's notebook check when you first walk in. Finish the rest of them as you can as practice. Make the homework assignment that y'all picked up um, yesterday, the lesson two, three homework. 
Make it due on Friday at the end of class. Okay? All right. Questions? All right. Thank you very much.